Hello and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use a fun review game tool called Lukit. Lukit is, like I said, a review game tool, but there's lots of different game types within this tool that support in-person learning, uh, synchronous learning, maybe if you're wanting to do a quick review game as a part of Google Meet, or it can be played asynchronously on the student's own time at their own pace. So the first thing you'll do is you'll go to the website, bluekit.com, and you'll sign up for your free account. And you can set up your account so that it is associated with your school Google account. So you don't have to remember another password or username. And once you're here, uh, it's kind of similar to Kahoot and quizzes and Quizlet and that you make sets. And the sets are the questions, vocabulary terms, and content you want students to review and practice with in a game. So the other helpful features here across the top dashboard, if you already have a set made like what I do, you would click play and that would help you start playing your game. Um, Discover is where you can pull from examples that other teachers have published and borrow their study sets and their games and build and customize your own from their templates. Home is just your dashboard where we are right now. Create is where you can create one from scratch or a new one. Stats show you your students' performance and what they've engaged with with some of your study sets. And then market, there are some features that you can pay for within this tool, but you should be able to get by with everything you need in the free version. And then these are just sample ones out there as well for you to play with. And those are just your account settings there. So if I wanted to make a study set for my students, I'm gonna walk you through how you can make a review game from scratch. So I'll click the little pencil button, create at the top, and you have to add a cover, Im a cover image and a title. So we're just gonna call this one Indiana Trivia. And then for the image here, I can upload one from my computer, a URL, or I can search through some free to use pictures from a library. And we're gonna pick this one because it looks cool. All right, the settings here, if you leave it public, then other people can find it and borrow your question types. I typically just leave that open there to help other teachers out if they wanted to play this Indiana trivia game. Now you have two options here. If you create manual ones and you would type out each question and the correct answers and the other possible answers out each time you wanna add an element to this specific set. If you were a Quizlet user, you can import the study sets that you've used on Quizlet into this game. I'm gonna show you how to do that really quickly if you were curious about that. So if you do Quizlet import, you'll select that and you'll click create. And then what it's going to do here is actually just walk you through and it's really helpful each step that you need to do to import a Quizlet set. So what I would do is find my study set on Quizlet that I want to use. And then what I'm going to do is scroll and it tells you this, I just skipped ahead. Um, I'm gonna go to where it has my account right here in my study set, three dot button and export. And then I'm going to scroll further down and this has all of my Quizlet vocab terms and the correct answers. And I'm going to click copy text. And then come back to look it and click next step. And it walks me through everything I just did on the screen with you guys. And then I would just paste all of the text that I copied and click add questions. If I had created this manual from scratch, it would be the same process where instead of just pasting in the text, I would be typing out each question. So here's an example of that. If I wanted to add more to this, such as add a question, then this is what it looks like if you're creating one manual from scratch. Type that there. Select which one is correct. And mess with the time limit here, random answer order, so it's not always the same place. And then I'm gonna move my camera here and I would click save. And if I wanted to go through and change any of those question types that I had imported from Quizlet, I can also do that from this view and I can even import more questions if I have another study set from Quizlet that I wanted to pull from. So whenever I am finished editing this set, I would click save set. And now it's going to save it on my profile and I can play this with my students. All right, so here is my set. If I wanted to play this, I have a couple of options. I could click host 
And this is going to give me some join information that I can share with my students. So there are lots of different game types within this review game tool. And whenever you click host, that's when it shows you some of the different options here. And the, really the best ones to play depending on your learning goal and your learning environment. So if you select one of them, it will tell you over here the best way to play this. So it is a solo type of game. The students don't have to work together on this one. Um, and they can have, it's best if you have three or more players. So this is more of a synchronous option here. Other ones, if you click them again, it tells you some more options here. If you notice, there's two options. Host means that it's really intended for a synchronous live game. The teacher is running it. It's better if you're all playing at the same time. Homework, on the other hand, works really well for asynchronous. So this is really good for e-learning. If you wanted to have your students play this game, but you're not all working together at the same time, if you set it up in homework mode, then you can leave this game open for a period of time and students can play it during that period of time. I think what we're gonna do is cafe and we're gonna do this as the homework option. All right, so here is where you can toggle some of those settings now to where students can play this for a window of time. So if I want to leave this open, this is by default, it's due tomorrow. So if I wanna keep this open for a while, I can. Maybe we'll keep it open until next week. And I'm not gonna change the time unless I wanna have it end maybe when my class period would end that day. And I would click assign now. So to have students join your game, they get a join code and a link. And if I scroll a little bit further down the page, this is the direct link that I could just give them so they don't have to enter the code. I don't want to. And right here, it is showing some of the different stats that I can see when my students start playing the game. So to play this as a student, you have a couple of options. Um, I think it's helpful that if you plan on playing this game often with your students, that you have them sign up. And when they sign up, they can do their Google account, and when they use their Google account, um, they do have to be a certain age, just to warn you. And they have to say they're a student. So if they are younger than age 13, just make sure you get parent permission before you use it. But then what I would do is I can join my teacher's class. So now that I'm signed in, I can get going. All right, and because I created an account, it automatically saves my data so that if I happen to walk away or leave the game at any point in time, it remembers where I was. And that's only available if your students have created an account and you guided them through that process. If you didn't create an account with your students and they don't have their own student account, they can still play, but if they leave the game in the middle of it, they won't have their work saved. So in this specific game, it's called cafe and the goal is that you answer the questions whenever you get a correct answer, you get a little food item and then you give the food to the people who come to your cafe in your store and you earn money and that's how you keep making more food um, and getting questions correct. So you could go through the really short tutorial and whenever you're finished with the tutorial, you click open cafe and it tells you how long the teacher set up the assignment before it closes and the assignment is due. All right, so Whenever you're ready, the person comes in and they want toast. So city, Indy, and then I give it to that person. All right, so you answer the question. So it is a little bit based on speed and accuracy. All right, and that's the end of my game. All right, and it gives you a little bit of monetary piece here that your students um, can use that to unlock other parts of the game. And it's just based on how often you play the tool. So if you play this game often, this is not real money, it's just points in the game, then they could unlock some of these additional features and get more and more points. So it's kind of an incentive for your students along the way. So that is one specific type of game you can play here um, in Bluekit. If I wanted to play a different game with my students, I could also set up another one and that could be another game I would host, go back to my sets, select a different game mode. And this one is another one that you can do homework on. If you wanted to do one that was a live game, 
and do racing and host game. And this one works really well if you have multiple players. So this would be a really great one to do in like a Google Meet, show, share your screen, show it to your students, uh, and they play the game on their devices. And this is where you can set the threshold for the number of questions the students have, allow them to join late, um, and you can click host now or configure some more of the settings. It's similar to Kahoot in that it plays music and it gives them a code to join in. And once all of your players have joined, then it starts the game and it just moves like a racing game. So if they get questions right, they move faster through the course. And the idea is to be the first one to finish. So those are just some of the fun ways that you can play with BlueKit. There are tons of tutorial videos out there that show you all the different game types. They are adding new types of games almost weekly, it seems. So it's always an opportunity to learn. If you have any questions, let us know and have fun.